To ask why we fight is to ask why the leaves fall. It is in their nature. In one of my previous videos, I stated that Mr. Pandaria was my favourite expansion for World of Warcraft, which was obviously met with some criticism. But this did get me thinking, why is it my favourite? Why do I miss Mr. Pandaria over all the other previous expansions? Well, I thought I would dive into the expansion itself and see if I could work out the meaning behind it all and perhaps make my stance a little more understandable. Just so you know, before jumping into this, please note that these are just my opinions and I'm in no way trying to tell you for a fact that Mr. Pandaria was the best expansion. In fact, you'll probably find that I end up saying almost the opposite. Mr. Pandaria was released in September 2012, following on from the Turbulent Cataclysm expansion released in 2010. Miss had been a departure from the standard formula that had been set in the previous three expansions, as it began with no clear main antagonist to represent an end goal. Instead, the beginning of the expansion focused on the exploration of this brand new continent, discovering its vast landscapes, its inhabitants, and its secrets. Throughout our introduction to Pandaria, we are greeted by the brand new playable race, the Pandaren, a race that is more jovial and comical in its style and animations when compared to the existing races in the game. We are also introduced to a new class, the Monk, a class that can play DPS, tank and healer and are mostly melee focused. We are also shown the beautiful landscape with its own recognisable style with varied zones from the cold peaks of Kunlai Summit, the swampy undergrowth of Krasarang Wilds, or the shard touched dread wastes. The story that plays out in Pandaria and its subsequent patches focus on the war between the Alliance and the Horde, following on from the events during the Cataclysm. The story encapsulates the effects of bringing the war to Pandaria, the struggle for power, devastating Mogu artifacts, and eventually the downfall of Gaosh Hellscream. This was another departure from previous expansions. As previously stated, the expansion started with no main antagonist obvious to the player, so the story evolved and changed throughout the patches leading to the creation of multiple endgame bosses that all threatened our adventures in one way or another. All in all, it sounds like a varied and interesting experience for the player, offering a wide range of activities to take part in and a whole new land to explore. So what went wrong? Let's first discuss the Pandaren race. Even before the release of the expansion, the reveal of the Pandaren had been troubled. A large proportion of players felt that the Pandaren were not a serious race, there only for comic relief. Most of us know that the Pandaren were created as an April Fool's prank back in the early 2000s, as the fifth race for Warcraft 3, and since then, that label has been stuck with them ever since, despite having their entire background lore written to fit in with the rest of the story. It also doesn't help that this expansion was revealed after the Kung Fu Panda movie was released, only further fueling this conception. While I'd say that this belief is completely fair, I'd also say that the devs didn't do the Pandaren justice until much later, throughout this expansion and in the later ones. The Pandaren have such a rich lore behind their story, which isn't plagued by their overtly comical style, and it wasn't clearly translated at the beginning of the expansion where it would have been nice to see a more serious side of the Pandaren. The closest thing we have to a strong Pandaren character in this expansion would be Taran Zhu and the Shadow Pan. Most of the other major characters play into the more jovial and comical side of the Pandaren, such as Chen Stormstout, Li Li, and even Law Walker Cho. You kind of get a mixed bag with the Pandaren as they're trying to tell a serious story taking place in Pandaria, with the resurgence of the Shah and controlling your emotions, the war taking place on their shores, combined with quests for beer and food. While I think those sorts of quests have their place, it really takes you out of the moment and it feels like the Pandaren are only taking it half seriously. Perhaps this is why most of the Pandaren characters in later expansions have been relegated to background characters and embassy workers. Nobody takes them seriously. Another problem with the aesthetic and design of Pandaria was that it didn't really fit the overall style of World of Warcraft. There was a very obvious difference in the design and architecture of buildings, gear and other items throughout this expansion. It also felt that because it was based on existing architectural styles, with no major differences between it and the real world representation, it didn't feel that unique. Alongside this, because it was based on an existing real world style, many people thought that the entirety of this expansion was just created to appease the Asian market at the time. Next, 
let's look at the gameplay elements that really let this expansion down. The biggest problem that I see and agree with was the over-reliance on daily quests. This expansion packed in so many daily quests and rep grinds, which gated certain story elements and gear, and it makes the game turn into a chore. Instead of progressing the story because you want to, you first have to grind out weeks worth of dailies just to get to the next point in the storyline or get that bit of gear you need. There were so many possible daily quests you could do that they actually had an achievement for it, which kind of feels like a kick in the teeth. But it was the beginning of implementing more of these daily quests and login requirements, which slowly filtered into later expansions, and that really soured the experience for me. I'm not a fan of dedicated and constant playing just to keep up, it's just not how I play games. If the game interests me and I want to progress the story, I want to do so at my own pace. I can understand why they're there, but to me it just wasn't the best way to do it. Then there was the introduction of Warforged and Thunderforged items, which added another unnecessary RNG element to getting the gear you needed. To have your best in slot gear locked behind not only a percent chance to drop from the boss, but to also have a second dice roll of whether or not it will be Thunderforged is momentum killing. Not only that, but say you're in a raid and everyone's doing great. You kill the boss and get your drop, but someone else gets a Thunderforged piece of gear for the same amount of effort you just put in just because of a lucky RNG roll. It feels like you're better off playing a slot machine at that rate. It creates an unnecessary imbalance for raid groups and it blurred the lines between what was actually achievable and what was purely luck of the draw. The final point I want to touch on is the seriously long content drought we had at the end of this expansion. In fact, it's the longest a final patch has gone on for in WoW's history. The final patch 5.4 was released on the 10th of August 2013, and it continued until Warlords of Draenor's release a full 460 days after this. As good as this patch was, the fact that it dragged on for so long meant that so many players dropped off, and they only saw a resurgence when Warlords dropped. Of course, Warlords dropped the ball even harder, but we won't even start on that. So you can see that Miss was troubled from its very start, and it had a wide range of problems that people still talk about today. And I'll admit, some of these points are justified and completely fair, but Miss did have redeeming qualities that outshine many of these issues to me. So after all these problems, you're probably thinking, why on earth does this guy think that this was the best expansion? What possible redeeming qualities does this expansion have? Let me begin by talking about some of the gameplay aspects. To me, some of the best patches and raids came with Miss of Pandaria. I still remember running Throne of Thunder and Siege of Ogrimmar for the first time, and I don't think, to my recollection at least, I've ever had that same experience again. Now of course, you could say that another raid would never be the same. You joined in Mists. That must have been your first experience with raiding, so of course it stuck with you. And to some degree, yeah, absolutely. You will never feel the same way again after your first raid. But even as I went forward, to me, the raids I've played after Mists just never quite clicked in the same way again. I don't know why, I just found the bosses and mechanics far more engaging in these raids than those that came in later expansions. Again, completely my own opinion here, I'm not saying that Mr. Pandaria had the best raids ever, but for me, personally, they're up there. Outside of raiding, I found areas such as the Isle of Thunder and Timeless Isle to be great fun, even though they could be a little grindy at times. Overall, they offered a great experience and sense of exploration, which was just fun to have with friends. And in general, to me, the quest design and layout for your leveling experience in Pandaria felt great. I found I was far more engaged with what was happening around me and my character when compared to the experience I had in the rest of Azeroth when getting to that point. Outside of gameplay, some of these issues I discussed previously are actually good points as well as bad. There is a certain charm that was spun throughout the expansion that left such a profound effect which has stuck with me ever since. I talked about how the Pandaren are the comic relief of the universe and that they're too far removed from the existing fantasy that they don't really fit in, but simultaneously that jovial attitude and toned down expression also works in their favour. I often go back to Pandaria and I'm put in such a calm state that I don't feel with any other zone in the game. I know a lot of people when asked what their favourite zone or their most relaxing zone is, you'll often hear people say Grizzly Hills, Dun Moreau or Elwyn Forest, but for me the music, the atmosphere and the overall design of zones like the Jade Forest combined with this relaxed attitude taken by the Pandaren creates for a lack of better term, my happy place. 
I still remember hitting level 85 and traveling to the Jade Forest for the first time. And while it was something familiar to me, it also felt completely unique. I don't think I'll ever experience something like that again. So often would a quest in this area not just be about go here, kill some stuff, move on. They would also try and teach self-control, control over emotions and inner peace. And while that stuff is extremely cheesy and tropey in a sense that it's most likely ripped from an old kung fu movie, that sort of thing also resonates with me. You can call it dumb or irrelevant all you want, but to me, the story they're trying to tell within your first moments in Pandaria has a more profound, deeper meaning that can actually resonate with people in real life as well as in the game. The idea that emotions such as anger, fear and pride should be controlled, not left to inhibit our personality, is something that everyone can, at least on some level, relate to. And while all these points are the ones that stuck in my head while making this video, there's always been one point that sat in the back of my mind that threatened to make all these other good aspects pointless. There is one thing that people will always call back to regardless of the actual content of the expansion. You started in this expansion. Of course you think it's the best one, your argument is invalid. And therein lies the root of all this discussion. While writing and discussing this idea with some friends of mine, we sought to drill down into this idea, and the more you think about it, the more it makes sense. Did I really miss Mr. Pandaria, or do I just miss the experience of playing a game that I wanted to play for so long for the first time? The idea that we miss a certain expansion for World of Warcraft, or we think that a certain expansion is the best, could be the idea that we just miss our first time experiences. We miss experiencing this world for the first time and exploring and finding its secrets. We miss our first dungeon run while not knowing what to do and fighting our first boss. We miss grouping up with friends and making more friends along the way to share this experience with others. We miss the mystery that was within our reach. Even when someone's favourite expansion isn't necessarily the one they started in, was it really about the expansion itself or the experiences you had? The only other time I can think of this sort of scenario would be during BFA. I hated BFA as an expansion, but I also had a great time in it because me and some friends played it together, doing Mythic Plus Island Expeditions, and that experience to me will overcome a bad expansion. I still think back to the first time I played properly. It was two or three months after the release of Mr. Pandaria. Me and one of my best friends had both bought the game and a subscription for the first time. And I distinctly remember playing through those spring and summer months in the same room, leveling our first characters together, experiencing the world for the first time together. It has imprinted itself as one of the happiest times I've ever had. No other thoughts were going on other than, where do we go next? I remember grouping up with friends and people I'd met along the way and fighting through dungeons and raids for hours on end. I remember hitting 90 for the first time. I just handed in a quest in this very area, and I must have sat there in amazement that I'd finally done something that I'd been dreaming about for years. I still have my original character sitting in this very position today, after I made more and more characters. It only felt right to leave him where he belonged. All these memories rushing to the forefront when I sat down to write this script. All the memories and nostalgia that I hadn't thought about for years. And if I was to condense this very video idea down into a single statement. It's not that I miss Mr. Pandaria. I just miss being 15 again.